God happens when that happens. Yeah. And it's awesome. It is just so awesome. Now, I don't know whether you enjoyed worship this morning, but i got to tell you, for me, it felt really good. I didn't want to quit. I had to quit because if I kept on going, I wouldn't have any more voice. So we had to quit. Not quit, but we had to cease, right? We had to move on. But boy, did it feel good. Boy, did it feel good. And I just love the anointing. Love the anointing. All right, Butch, you take the lead, I'll echo you. You take the lead and I'll echo you. I gotta share this one story with you real quick. Years ago, we were in a Sunday night church service at McMinnville, Oregon. And I've been playing my saxophone since I was in the fifth grade. I, don't, I think I'm a pretty good saxophone player. We were in church on Sunday night. We were in a hall somewhere because that's a too long a story. But this ex-hippie guy who, who played the flute and played the piano. So we were having a worship service. And he was, he was right here playing the piano. He was facing that way. And I was sitting right here on the bench. I was sitting here and my wife was sitting here. And we were just worshiping in the spirit. And, and he began to play. And, and he just been, began to go up the scale and down the scale and up the scale and down the scale. And an anointing was on both of us. An anointing came over me and I began to play my sax. And to honest, honestly, I don't remember. It was an angel that was playing through that saxophone. And when we got all done, when he got all done with his thing and I got all done with my thing and, and we were done and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the pastor looked at both of us. He looked at me and he goes, Daryl, are you okay? I go, I don't know. I don't know if I'm okay or not. I don't know what just happened, but I know it was good, whatever it was. An angel came. The Holy Spirit spoke through our instruments. You see, folks, God happens when we give Him our very best. Whatever that is, somebody needs you to give you to them. Can you say amen? amen. All right, now let's move on. Let's go to verse 3. Then Elisha said, all right, go. You see, this is the next thing. God happens when we go. God happens when we go. How much faith we will, how much faith we have will determine how much go we have. All right, Elisha says to her, all right, go. God says to us, rise up and go. Moses is feeling sorry for himself. And he's crying, his face down on the ground. God comes and says, Moses. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get up and get going and do what I've told you to do. Joshua, fail with battle, second battle after taking Jericho, falling on his face and crying. He's feeling sorry for himself and he's weeping. He's just, oh God, oh God. He's crying to God. God comes and says, Joshua, stand up. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Wipe yourself, cleanse yourself up and get going. Somebody in the camp is sinned. And you got to go find out who that is. Now get going. You see, and faith will determine how much go we got going. Go. Go. Go somewhere. Go. You see, witness to somebody, folks. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what this Holy Spirit is saying. Tell somebody that they need to go to church. Bring somebody to church with you. Go. You see, and that takes courage. To go takes courage. And courage comes from this. Comes from being hungry. It comes from being hungry. This morning's worship service. The next point is this. You see, one thing that will help us to go is remembering the past. Remember how awesome it felt when you were worshiping the Lord in the presence of the Holy Spirit? Remember how awesome it was when you were baptized with the Holy Ghost and spoke with other tongues? Remember how awesome it used to feel when you just felt like you were invincible? Remember how awesome it used to feel like when the Word of God would come alive and just speak to your soul, 
Speak to your soul and a flame and a fire would burn down deep inside and it burned so hot and it burned so deep that you had to go tell somebody. You had to go pour out into somebody. You had to make a difference in somebody. You couldn't wait to get to church uh, to worship God once again. Remember how I used to feel? Well, you know what? You can have it again if you want it. If you're hungry for it, you can have it again. God will give you whatever you want from Him if we're hungry enough to seek it from Him. Yes. Go begins with being hungry. If I'm not hungry, I can have no go. I might look nice. I might be nice. I might be well educated and smart and kind and sweet and generous and everything else in the world. But you know what? If that car is parked in the driveway, no, that car was built for one reason. And the sound that used to come out of my 1968 Mustang Fastback 302, the sound and the rumble of those pipes, Ford is trying to equalize that same sound for today's modern Mustang because it had such a sound. It just, it was one of a kind. And I had one of those. Doesn't do any good to sit it in the driveway, put gas in it and drive it around and show it off. I mean, it's just, you know, you can't, you can't. And you get it, it's only one sound. And it was perfect. They haven't been able to prove on it since. Do you get what I'm saying here this morning, folks? You see, courage to go. Courage takes courage. And that begins with hunger. Remember, think of the past. Think of the past. And then next, what's the incentive? We got to have an incentive to go. What's your incentive to go? What's your incentive to witness to somebody? What's your incentive to pick somebody up, bring them to church? What's your incentive to go to a neighbor? What's your incentive to go to a friend? What's your incentive to come to the altar? What's our incentive to worship God? What's our incentive to play an instrument? What's my incentive to preach the Word of God? What's my incentive to pray? What's my incentive to spend sleepless nights seeking and calling out to God? What's our incentive? If we don't have an incentive, it's just going to stay parked in the driveway. And that Mustang was built to go. And folks, we've been called. You've been called to go. I've been called to go. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right, verse 4. Verse 3, let's finish it up. Go, go now around and ask all your neighbors for the empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. You see, now, I can, I can see it like this, folks. So she's going, her and her sons are going to the neighbors and asking for jars. So she knocks on the door. Money! Sister So and Smith, good to see you. What can I do for you? Well, I was just wondering if you had any extra jars. Well, yeah, I got a couple extra jars. Well, could I have them, please? Well, sure. I guess you could have them. I'm not using them. What is it you want them for? Well, Elisha's here, the, the man of God, and he said that he's going to do a miracle, and, and I need your jars so that I can pour my oil into those jars. And he said that those jars are going to be multiplied, and we're going to have a miracle because I owe a huge debt from my husband. And the neighbor says, well says one of two things. The neighbor says, well, good luck with that. Right? Good luck with that. Let me know it. You know, let me know if you need any more. Ha, ha, ha. Or the neighbor's going to say, cool, wow. Can I get in on some of that? Can I get in on that? Amen. I want to be a part of that. Is God happening there? I want to be a part of God happening. I'm so tired of God not happening in my life. Is there any place where God is happening? Yeah, He's happening in my house. If I can have your jars, He's going to happen. Cool. Let me know if I can have some of that happening. Hallelujah. Don't ask just for a few. Verse 4. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars. And as each is filled, put it to one side. Verse 6. 
Verse 5, I'm sorry. She left him and went out and collected all the jars. And afterwards she came home and she shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. She kept pouring. And when all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. A couple more points now before I close this morning. You see, folks, when the Lord said to her, Then go and collect these jars and shut the door behind you. You see, folks, God happens in the secret place of our relationship with Him. God happens in the secret place of our relationship with Him. If you get anything out of what is ministered from this pulpit, if you get anything what is ministered from the worship service of this place, of this house of worship, if you get anything, it's because of the hours that are spent in the secret place with God. You see, God happens in our secret places with Him. Get alone and shut the door. Get alone with God and cry out to God. Get alone with God and wrestle with God. It's in those secret places uh, that God will meet you and I. It's in that secret place. Uh, and then when you come out of that secret place, uh, He's got miracles waiting. He's got a testimony to show to others. Uh, he'll let you know and others know that you've been in the secret place with Him. And that God is happening in our lives. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And you see, the next one is this, as I get ready to close. You see, God happens when we pour ourselves out. Let's read it one more time. In verse 5, you shut the door. And they brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. She kept pouring. You see, folks, God happens when we pour ourselves out into other jars. Bring me another jar. And as soon as she, they brought another empty jar, and she poured into that empty jar, and God was happening. Every time she poured, God happened. Bring me another jar. And they bring another jar. And she poured, and God happened as she poured. Folks, God happens when we pour ourselves out into somebody else. And not just into our own family members, but into somebody else. God happens when we pour. The very example of pouring out is Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Can you say amen? His blood was poured out. His soul was poured out. It poured out into you and I. And that's when God happens is in that pouring. And every time as she continued to pour, God happened. God happened. Remember a couple Sundays ago, the other widow who only had a little bit of oil and a little bit of meat left to make a bread. And every time, and, and the prophet came, and every time that she would go and get hungry, God happened every time she became hungry until the famine was over. So when she got hungry again, and it was time to make another cake with a little bit of oil and a little bit of wheat, and she would make that cake and that wheat when she got hungry. God happened in her hunger. Now we see where the God happens every time we pour out into somebody else. We're supposed to be pouring out into another jar. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. 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 And you see if we continue to read in verse 7. And when she stopped pouring, when there were no more jars left, God stopped happening. But there was an abundance. Before I get to the abundance and close this morning, folks, listen to this. When we stop pouring out, God stops happening. Mm -hmm. Listen, church. As we stop pouring out, God stops happening. That's right. We'd be wonderful people. Wonderful Christian people. Mustang parked in the driveway with a full tank of gas. Just ready to be turned on and ready to rumble. It was created to go. I got other things to do today. I'm wrapped up and I'm, I'm encompassed with too many other affairs. I'm entangled with so many other things. I don't have time to witness. I don't have time to share my faith. 
I don't have time to bring somebody to church. I don't have time to invite somebody. I don't have time to make a difference. I don't have time to get into my prayer closet and seek God and come against the forces of darkness. I'll do that later when I have a little bit more time. You see, when we stop pouring, God stops happening. Think about it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Lord, Lord, allow me to pour. Lord, I don't ever want to stop pouring. Oh my God. I don't ever want to stop pouring. Lord, give me opportunity to pour and to pour and just keep bringing more jars and bring more jars because when, when the jars and the empty jars stop coming and I stop pouring, oh God, then you stop happening and that just can't happen. Bring more jars. Yes. Lord, bring me more jars. Lord, bring me more jars that I might pour in to those jars. Christian people, when we stop pouring, God stops happening. That's right. And then we wonder why. And then we wonder why. Then we wonder why the United States of America is going to hell. Then we wonder why there's such crisis around the earth today. Then we wonder why man's condition is so in such despair. Then we wonder why, when in an age when we're supposed to be more connected than ever before in the history of mankind, we are more disconnected than ever before in the history of mankind. Why? For every reason that I've been preaching this morning, every reason that I preach this morning, how that God happens, the church, the body of Christ, in one sense or another, has stopped pouring. Yes. Stop praying. Stop going into that secret place with God and getting alone with God and crying out to Him and coming against the forces of darkness. Oh. And we wonder why. We wonder why the difficulties. We wonder why the sicknesses. We wonder why the forbearances. We wonder why the crises. For all the reasons. It's just not being negative, but it's to preach the word of God. Hear what the voice of the Lord is saying. I close with this. You see, God happens when we hear his instruction. Almighty man of God, you got to help me. Okay, what would you like me to do for you? Well, let's start with this. What do you got? Now, if I'm unwilling to follow the instruction, no matter how much it might hurt, no matter how much it might cost me, if I'm unwilling to follow the instructions of God's Word, then let none of us wonder why things are the way that they are. Yes. Yes. Holy smokes, I'm just getting fired up. I need to preach another hour. You see? If you read the rest of the story, when we obey that instruction of God and we're in gap A where we're supposed to be, our narrow, our focus is narrow. We've got a secret place where we cry out to God and I'm following his instruction. It might be a crisis right now, but in the end, soon coming, the abundance is coming. And Elisha told the widow, now you take that and you sell what oil you need to sell to pay off your student loans. Take the rest of it and live on it for the rest of time until the famine is over, until God will bless you in another way. You have obeyed me. Abundance is yours in the middle of this crisis while other people around you are still wondering why. God is so good. Folks, I couldn't wait to get to church this morning to declare even to my soul and to cry out to God and say, God, give me more jars to pour into. Because when I pour, you happen in my life. Can you say amen? Yes.